everybody, what's up? Killjoy Jake here, and instead of having friends, I have horror movies. I know I announced earlier that I was gonna do three different videos, but man, it's just gonna be a lot easier if I just shove all these very small stories into one little video. So I'm talking about the new Resident Evil movie today, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre film that's actually coming out a little sooner. We're gonna get into that in very soon. And then also Jeepers Creepers 4. We have some more news about that! I'm gonna get into all these very small stories in just a second here, but first I'm gonna need y'all to like this video and subscribe for more horror content. Also, please consider supporting me on Patreon. The link for that will be in the description below. Alrighty, now let's get into it. What's your favorite scary movie? Well, I'm Pennywise and Ken Sinclair. Oh, no, not the beast! Not the beast! You son of a... God, don't do that. Well, sometimes that is better. So starting this video off with the new Resident Evil film, we finally got some of our first shots from the upcoming new film. Unlike whatever the hell is going on in the rest of the Resident Evil films, we actually have main characters that are characters from the video games! That is so exciting for me, I am a huge Resident Evil fan, I love these games so much, I've been playing them since I was a kid. Resident Evil 3 was one of the first video games I ever played, like, on the actual original PlayStation. So talking about those set photos a little bit, that first picture we got is of uh, Wesker, Jill, and Chris Redfield at the original mansion. We learned a while ago though that they're going to be taking like the plot line of the first like three games and kind of like squishing them together into one movie which is like it's possible you're gonna have to like do a lot of edits because there's a lot of story there. I believe there's a year in between the first game and the second and third game so you're gonna have to kind of like cram some stuff together. You're gonna have to either do like flashbacks to what happens in the first game or maybe do like a time jump. Maybe do like the first 20 minutes as that first game and then like just uh, do like a time jump into where, where the second and third game take place. Because I, I believe, if I'm not wrong about this, that it takes like chronologically, it's like the beginning half of the third game, the entire second game, and then the ending of the third game is how that timeline goes for all the Raccoon City stuff. So it's gonna be kinda weird how they do it. In the set picture though, we get all three of those characters that I previously mentioned, and they don't look exactly like their like video game counterparts. For example, Wesker doesn't have like the straight up blonde hair and the sunglasses, which is like iconic. Man, I mean like out of all the characters from Resident Evil, I feel like everyone knows Wesker as a villain with like the tall, straight up blonde hair and the sunglasses, and he doesn't have that at all in this picture. Although, with that being said, Tom Tom Hopper is a great casting choice for this role. I just wish they would have let him like grow his hair out, dyed it blonde, wore sunglasses. Very easy things to accomplish. Jill doesn't have her beret either, which is like, could have used the beret, man. I mean, it's like, it's a little thing, but man, the attention to detail would be nice. I will say though, the attention to detail so far has been pretty phenomenal. There are like, it's just little things at this point that are just bugging me as a huge fan. I mean, Claire in the second picture here has the red jacket. She has like her exact outfit from that second game. It looks pretty dope. The second picture is of course, Leon Kennedy and Claire Redfield. I'm very excited to see like how they do the, uh, all the Raccoon City stuff. With Robbie Amell as Chris Redfield, my assumption is that they're going to add him into all the Raccoon City like storyline so my guess is that he's going to be with Jill throughout like third game's plot which I'm, I believe is going to happen simultaneously with the second game's plot in the movie that just kind of makes sense and it's a little more cinematic to do it that way they'll probably have like the whole first game in that first 20 minutes is like your opener and then the rest of the movie will be all the Raccoon City stuff a year later with two plot lines so you'll have like Jill's plot line of the third movie but add Chris in as a like the side character and then you'll also have like Claire and Leon's story as like the other plot. Now the most interesting set photo we got though is this picture of Lisa Trevor. Now she's a character that was added into the original game's remake. So basically what this kind of confirms is that they're going to be following the plot lines of like those the remake games. So like the, the first game's remake, the second one, and the third one which are a little more recent than the original game. The changes to those games aren't anything like super significant. The whole Lisa Trevor plot line is actually really like scary. It's like the subplot in that first game. I guess, I, I believe if I'm remembering correctly, it's when you go out to like that shed outside and you get like knocked out by her and then she's kind of a boss fight. It has a little bit to do with like Barry's character, like he found out that like one of the like one of the guys from Umbrella was like experimenting on his like wife and kids, and that's who Lisa Trevor is, the wife of some character. I like I said, I'm kind of doing this off of memory right now. But that's gonna be a really interesting addition to this movie. I don't know how they're gonna like fit that into a 90-minute film. Like I said, they already have to like edit some stuff down to put all that to the storyline of those first three games 
all into one movie, that's going to be kind of a difficult task to do. It does get me slightly worried about the film, but the fact that we're already going to be seeing like actual plot lines from the games, actual characters having somewhat <laughs> significant details that are relatively close to their characters from the game, you know what? I'll take it. This is a huge step in the right direction for this franchise, especially the movie franchise, which has like had nothing to do with the games in the past before. This is such a big improvement for me. I'm, I'll take it, whatever it is. The film comes out November 24th of this year. Very excited to see it. So real quickly, I also want to talk about the new Paranormal Activity film. Once again, I just feel like if I did this in a separate video, it wouldn't get as many views, which is unfortunate because I'm very excited for this film as well. It was supposed to be coming out sometime next year, actually sometime in the spring. It is now moved up all the way to this Halloween season sometime in October. We don't have an exact release date yet, but it is going to be dropping on Paramount Plus sometime in October. I don't even think it's going to have a theatrical release date, which is a little scary. The film was directed by William Eubank, who directed the incredibly underwhelming Underwater from last year. Yeah, underwhelming as fuck. <laughs> but it was written by Christopher Landon, who is extremely exceptional in everything that he has done, including the Paranormal Activity, uh, like basically all of the Paranormal Activity sequels he wrote, and then he's also he also did uh, the Happy Death Day movies and Freaky as of the most recent. In my opinion, anything Christopher Landon touches is just turns to gold. I love just about all of his movies. I'm very excited to see what he does with like kind of a retooling of the new of this franchise. That's kind of how it's being described, not quite like a reboot, just a retooling. My, my assumption by this is that they're going to change the ending that Ghost Dimension did so poorly. This is actually a really great story. If you watch all these movies in succession, there's a really interesting story to be had here. But that last film just kind of ruins it. It's kind of like the ending of Game of Thrones, if I'm being totally honest. So if this movie is kind of like a different way to end it and decides to retcon just that movie uh, up until that point, I'm totally fine with that. I love the rest of the Paranormal Activity movies. I think they're great. They're very underrated. They get like this horrible rap for being found footage, but they're like one continuous story. What other franchise does that? I can't think of like too many, like the Child's Play movies, sure. But it's such a wonderful franchise that has been so overlooked by people. I hope that this new installment gives us a better ending to it than whatever the hell was going on in Ghost Dimension. Speaking of movies going directly to a streaming service, the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie has just been announced to be going directly to Netflix without a theatrical release. I'm a little concerned for this film. There's already been so much weird, like, hysteria surrounding this film, which is, like, just not, it's kind of foreboding, it's not very positive whatsoever. The director, the original directors were fired and replaced. But with that being said, Fede Alvarez, who produced the film, has said nothing but good things about it. Now, listen, when you produce a film, when you're a part of a film in any sort of way, you're gonna want to say good things about it. Like, for example, I think Red Right Hand is going to be fantastic. I think I have a really cool idea for something to do with the Scream franchise. I don't want to say what yet, because it's kind of a shock, it's kind of a surprise. I think it's gonna be really interesting. A lot of people are going to hate it, though. That's just something I have to live with as a, someone who is making a movie. People are not gonna like the direction I take with it, but some people are also going to love it. Personally, to me, it just sounds like they're ripping off a lot of things from Halloween 2018 and just copying and pasting it with Leatherface and Sally Hardesty playing the roles of Michael Myers and and Laurie Strode. That can be a recipe for disaster, but it also did really work, especially for me in 2018 with the Halloween franchise. I really like that film. I know a lot of people hate it. I don't really understand that. Personally, it's my favorite in that entire franchise besides the original. I think it kicks ass. It's the most brutal we have ever seen Michael Myers. The fact that no other distributor wanted this film and they sent it to Netflix, which will buy literally anything and put it on their streaming service, like, yeah, that's a little concerning. Netflix bought the latest Tremors film and wow, Wow, that was trash. So to be completely honest with you, I am a little worried about the new Texas Chainsaw. I am I am still excited to see it. Like, I love the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies. One, two, and that remake from like the early thousands, I think are phenomenal movies. I think they're really fun to watch. They're, they're terrifying. And the biggest thing that they get wrong, and I talked about this in my last Texas Chainsaw Massacre update, is that that original film is not a slasher movie. And the fact that they're following a format that a new, that like an old slasher movie trying to bring itself back into like the modern day horror scene, they're following that same format that Halloween is. Halloween is a slasher franchise. It's, you can't even argue that. There is one of the most iconic slasher franchises we have besides like Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street. I would argue that the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies slowly became uh, a slasher franchise, but it didn't start off that way. That first movie is an art house psychological film. It's more comparable to something that 824 would throw out there than like a new Blumhouse movie. Someone has to go back and watch that original film and try to recreate that. That's what I want to see in a new Texas Chainsaw movie. There's going to be a lot of things to love, but I just think there's a better approach to this movie than whatever the hell they're doing with this new film. And finally, kind of like the biggest story of this whole video, the new Jeepers Creepers film we just found out is still in post-production. 
meaning we're probably not going to get that fall of 2021 release date that we had been talking about for so long. Timo Verinsola, the director of this new film, who replaced Victor Salva, thank God, and just announced on his website that the film is still in post-production, that they're still kind of working on it, and he also said that, like, he just doesn't know what's going on with this film, which, like, to me, that's just so weird, man. I, I don't, I don't know. This dude, this guy's been giving off so much negative energy about the movie, he doesn't want to talk about it at all. I know a lot of people have said, well, he just doesn't want to give anything away about the movie. Probably, like, a lot of shocking things, a lot of surprises in the new film. I don't know, man. If I made a movie, especially a continuation to a horror franchise that, like, why would they get this guy if he wasn't a big fan of Jeepers Creepers? Like, you know what I mean? That, that, that's a, there's a huge red flag there. It, it seems like he has no interest in this movie whatsoever. He doesn't want to talk about it. Honest to God, I want to talk about my fan film so much because I love the Scream franchise. I love Scream so much and I want to talk about it with you guys. But I can't, because there's a lot of spoilers and things that I could accidentally spoil. I already have said some stuff that I'm like, oh, I probably shouldn't have said that. I posted, like, maybe a little too much about it because I'm just so excited and I want to talk about it. The fact that this guy has just held such restraint is a little bit of a red flag. Like, you think you'd, like, get a little more from him. Like, maybe he'd post, like, a set photo. Like, hey, here's me with the creeper. He's got his arm around him or something with a thumbs up. I, I was expecting something like that from him. But no, nothing. He's actually been posting, like, some passive-aggressive shit on his personal, like, Instagram saying, like, stop asking me about Jeepers Creepers. He's posted that, like, multiple times. And to me, like I said, that's a big red flag. He doesn't want to talk about his film. He's kind of worried that maybe it sucks. So what did you guys think about all these horror updates? Leave me a comment about whatever I talked about here down below. Thank you so much for watching this big old update video. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more horror content. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Just look up Killjoy Jake and I'll come up. Please consider supporting me on Patreon as well to see more videos like this. You can check that out by clicking on the link in the description below. And as always, don't forget to kill it out there, y'all.